I'm happy to have on the show today Wes Smith, which I saw was Wesley, and uh, who, among many other things, is a cosplay photographer. Uh, I want to thank you for sitting down with me, and welcome to the show. No problem, man. Very nice to meet you. How's it going? It's going well, going well. <laughs> um, to kick things off, uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, such as what you do, where you're from, and your credit card number, of course. Okay, of course. You don't want that. Trust me. <laughs> uh, like, like you said, my name is Wes Smith. Uh, Mama calls me Wesley. She's about the only one and only one I'm in trouble. Uh, I'm, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, that's where I have my studio, which is specifically a cosplay-based studio. do a little bit of senior portraits and stuff, too, but 90% cosplay. Um, I'm based out of Ohio, but I travel all over the place, going to a bunch of different conventions. I go to KatsuCon in D.C., Chicago for C2E2, um, Denver for Rocky Mountain Con. Uh, and like I said, just kind of specialize in cosplay photography. It's, it's kind of blown up here and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really, really, really happy with the stuff that's, that's coming out. You know, I think I've kind of got a unique look on it and I really love doing it because the, it, it gives me a way to kind of help people feel better about themselves, you know, to feel awesome in their, in their, in their own skin and in their costumes. And the photography is just kind of like a means to do that. That's, that's really what I love doing. Yeah, I get it. I get that. Um, you did mention uh, traveling around for conventions, and there's been a yeah. question I've been trying to trying to find somebody to answer. Um, and since I have you here, I'll throw it yeah. out to you. Maybe you have the answer. How do you go about getting invited to conventions? Um, you, the way that I specifically got invited to some of the conventions that I do now is um, you go to the conventions and you just basically do like your standard hall shots and stuff like that. You know, you see somebody awesome, you take a picture of them, you take a, you take a, a nice picture of them, take your time, do solid work. Then, uh, you know, all the conventions and stuff like that have Facebook pages, almost all of them anyway. Um, so they're always asking, hey, post your pictures, tag them. Make sure whenever you post on like your your particular page and you're sharing to the convention's Facebook page to tag the cosplayers, to tag the convention in every single picture because then on their feed, your name goes ding, 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 and they're looking at that going, holy freaking crap, you know? Don't, don't, don't put like two or 300 pictures up. Have like your, your best of the best gallery. And I'd say probably pick from 15 to 30 different pictures from the, from the weekend, depending on how many people you shoot. And uh, get those, like, really solid. I mean, just really, really nice. Put them up there. Uh, put your watermark on them. Tag the convention. And then, you know, your name keeps popping up and stuff like that. If they need somebody, they'll contact you. There you go. And so so the guy that I slipped 50 bucks to, his name is Wes. <laughs> and so I give 50 bucks to Yeah, yeah, sure, he yeah. <laughs> tags me in all the pictures that aren't me. Next thing right, I, yeah. I'm appearing. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to learn a lot about uh, your journey into the world of photography, um, but I put, out, I put out some feelers <laughs> on Twitter, and mm. Ryan O'Leary uh, wanted to know the answer to the following three questions. We'll take them one at a time. Gotcha. We'll get these done, and then we'll get into some, some other, other stuff. Sounds good, man. But he wanted to know, how did you get started in photography as you know a business? Photography in general, um, I actually worked for a uh, professional photographer here in Southern Ohio who was a good friend of our family. Um, my wife was connected with him and his name was Sean Richendaller. He did a lot of uh, like weddings and stuff like that. He was one of the high end wedding photographers back in the day here. And he needed a, uh, a guy to kind of help manage the office to do the bookings, to do actually the Photoshopping and stuff like that because he was literally dragged kicking and screaming into digital. This was right around that time whenever digital was first becoming like a big thing. Like, okay, I'm going to have to do this. <clears throat> so, um, you know, I was kind of the guy who would, who would t touch up the skin and kind of handle like stuff like that. I would handle bookings. I would put in his orders and his software because, I mean, he was like booked as, as much as he wanted to work. He was doing seniors. He was doing weddings. He was doing families um, all day, every day. So I actually saw that side of it, and I went, nope, done. I'm, this is not what I want. I'm not interested in this. So fast forward three years, uh, my cousin, two of my cousins, one was getting married, one was graduating high school, and neither one of them had money for a photographer. And I'd seen Sean do his thing, and I, you know, I had like a little cheapy, junky camera, 
And I went, tell you what, I said, I, I found a camera, you know, that I kind of like it shot raw. That was really important to me for my research. And I didn't know what to do with it yet. I just knew it was important. But, um, so I, I did my research and found a, a decent camera and I was like, tell you what, if you guys go together, you get me this camera, I'll do your wedding. I'll do your senior session for free. And they went, sounds pretty good to me. So I did that and I posted the pictures on Facebook and, you know, people saw them and started going, well, how much do you charge? How much do you charge? And I was like, one camera. That's all I'd charged until then, you know, I didn't know. So, you know, again, fast forward two or three years shooting. I love, I love shooting seniors. I, I like the creativity that that allows. I don't like shooting families. I hate shooting babies. Um, I don't shoot. I think animals. we all hate shooting babies. We all shooting babies, but it's like, it's kind of like a joke in the community is like, don't talk to Wes about babies. Wes hates shooting babies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, I mean, I, I shot that for a while and I kind of got to where I was really frustrated with it. And, uh, that segued really nice into the cosplay photography because I've always been a massive comic book nerd video game player my whole life. Um, so I, I stopped photography for almost a year. Just like, I'm done with this. Screw this stuff. Nope, nope, I'm done. And was turning away work and just like, okay, you want this? Go to this person. You want this? Go to this person. Because at that point, I've been doing it for like three years. And, you know, like I said, I took it almost a year off and I was doing, I was taking jujitsu at the time. And one of my buddies in class dressed up as Batman, like, even by cosplay standards, he dressed up as Batman a lot, okay? Like, what are you, what are you dressed up as? He goes, eh, it's Friday and I'm going to Athens. I'm like, okay, good, you know? So, and this will answer the question of how I got started in specifically cosplay photography, too, because this is, you can't tell one story without the next. <laughs> so, um, long story short, he was like... Uh, we should do a shoot sometime. He said, I saw some of your other stuff. I like your senior stuff. And I haven't really seen that applied to cosplay. And cause this was back in 2013 and uh, heroes of cosplay was just getting big on TV and there was a lot of awareness and stuff. I'd kind of seen it. I, I didn't know anything about cosplay. I, I, I had to look it up on Google. I was like, what the freaking heck is this? You know? So he was like, uh, is it okay if I bring a couple of my friends and we can just have a shoot? I was like, yeah, man, whatever. That's fine. So we went and shot on a, roof of a parking garage in Athens, Ohio, uh, one Friday evening after work, 10 minutes into the shoot, I, I had that buzz again. I'm like, Oh my God, I don't know if this is even a thing that people do, but it's going to be a thing that I do. Cause I really, really like it. And the pictures were turning out great. Um, it really, it looked like a comic book. That's what I was going for. And you know, once I posted those pictures, I was still shooting under Wesley Smith photography back then. <laughs> Cause that's, I mean, you know, that's what you do, right? Whenever you start, you kind of do what everybody else does until you, until you find your groove, until you find your, your style, until you find your niche, you know? And, uh, yeah, so I did that. I posted the pictures and it kind of took off and I went to a convention after that. I've never been to a convention until 2013, the fall of 2013. And I'm coming up on 70 conventions since then. So it kind of, <laughs> <laughs> wow. And it goes no, without no. saying the person dressed as Batman at your jujitsu class was the infamous Night Mage. No. No. Actually no, no. no? I didn't even meet Night Mage until afterward. Oh, that would have been that would have been great. That was a good assumption though. I figured uh, it had to be. I figured he's he, down he, there wrestling on the floor with his cowl on. <laughs> if if I would have been close enough to Night Mage, I would I'm sure that he would be down with that. But um that he does like wrestling too. That's probably, that's like after party stuff. But no, the, the way that I met night mage was, um, he was like the only mutual friend among like every one of the cosplayers that was there. I kept seeing him pop up and he was wearing like a yellow Luke cage shirt and he had like the big chain and stuff. And I was familiar with comic books and I was like, dude, I haven't seen it. That's really cool. I don't know what this cosplay thing is, but I love that character. So I contacted him and was like, Hey, we need to, I'd love to, to shoot with you. Here's some samples of my work. And he showed up at the, that Cincinnati comic expo. That will always be, always be my home con, man. It's got a soft spot in my heart. Um, but and he showed up. You came this year. I went, didn't see yeah. of you. Oh, I was there. Oh, I was there. Shoot. I shoot for the con every year. I was busy, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, uh, they run me pretty hard now. Cause I, I shoot and I manage the cosplay, uh, photography team. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, he was there in his spawn and we took a couple pictures and those kind of really just, just blew up and stuff like that. And I was stupid and wasn't watermarking my stuff back then. So, you know, 
it, it didn't get the reach that it could have, but I didn't, I didn't know, you know, everybody starts out not knowing stuff. So but yeah, that's kind of the whole, the whole story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still surprised that wasn't a uh, night mage. Uh, n- I knowing just... what I know now, I really am too. <laughs> <laughs> Me, me and Night Mage have been like this ever since. So it's like every con that we're together, it's like, hey, you got two minutes? Absolutely, man. Click, 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 click. Peace out, you know? Because we, we've worked together so often. We've got dozens of stuff on my site. It's just like, it, it's so smooth. He knows how I how, how I think. And I, I know how he likes to be lit up and stuff like that. So it's, it's we've seriously done, like his Kratos God of War that people are like, oh, that's great. Seriously, a three-minute shoot. And we kicked out like half a dozen pictures. Same thing with his Thor. I was like a five minute shoot at that. Yeah. So, and speaking of your website, which is the dot com, which I will put down in the description, uh, the details of this episode. Thanks, I was man. I was scanning through it. There are some beautiful pictures on here. Thank you very much. I, I really like I really like the dark background that you use in a lot of mm-hmm. these. Yep. And there's Thor. There's Kratos. Is it Kratos yep. or Kratos? Kratos. Okay. God of War. Yep. And yes, it's not really a background as much as just camera settings. Everybody thinks I carry around a, ba- a black background with me. And I do something on my on my Facebook called You Shot That Where, where I'll show. It's like, this was taken in the middle of a hallway with people walking around in the background. You just couldn't tell. <laughs> and and that's that's what I love. I, I, I love the creativity about it. And I love uh, just kind of being able to give people that double take. Because whenever you take a picture of somebody and you go, okay, you'll be able to see them in a couple of weeks and they come back and they're photoshopped and they're really pretty. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I, know I have some really good friends who do amazing work that way for me personally. That's, that's not what I go for. Um, like I said, I, I love to make people feel amazing in their costumes and in their own skin and who they are. And if you can shoot something and then go check that out, turn the camera around right there and show them something where they do have that they have that black background they have now lighting on the floor is something i've been kind of playing around with complimentary complimentary lighting color on the floor um you know a couple lights from the side really lighting them up nice framing them well and really looking like the character the reaction from people has been phenomenal because some of them will be like oh my god that's i look awesome how did how did you make me look awesome i'm like I didn't make you look anything. This is what you look like walking around the hallway. I said, for real, this is you. I wanted to show you that. And it, it, you know, it's not me, it's them. I just show them what they look like. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned something about uh, not really Photoshopping a lot of backgrounds, using this probably shutter speed to, to get yep. that black background. Uh, but the second question that uh, Ryan had asked, since it was on that vein, he said, Thanks, do you Ryan. ever... <laughs> Do you ever Photoshop in backgrounds during during your post production? I can do that sort of stuff. Um, I'm not as good. At, it's not as efficient for me as my normal editing process. That's kind of the way that I shoot for that. If people do want like an actual composite done and do uh, like full fledged Photoshop work, I actually partner with um, two or three different people, but mainly uh, Steve Kaminsky from Kaminsky Can- Candids. Uh, he does like pretty much all of my photoshopping work. I've, I've worked with Steve. He's a very good friend of mine. Um, and you know, as a photographer, giving up your raw files is like, that's, that's the secret sauce. You know, that's, that's literally, you can do anything with a raw file and uh, a lot of people won't, but, and I, and I don't, if it's, if it's my normal images, people ask me, Hey, can I edit this? Normally, I'm pretty adamant about, you know, I don't allow any, anybody except for my approved editors to edit my images. And, you know, it's not because I'm a dick about it. It's because I don't want something out there. If if you go to a restaurant and say, you're known for this, I would really like to have that. They better be able to reproduce that every time. And if somebody does a really cool edit of their own and puts it out there and it blows up, if i got people contacting me and going, hey, I love this picture for such and such. I, I want one like that. And I go, I can't really do that. That wasn't me. It, it's it's not a fair representation of me and it's not a fair representation of the person. So I, I want something that they know they can come to me. I can knock it out in 30 seconds. You know, the way that I shoot, boom, let's let's do it. I can get you kicked out of here in two minutes. No problem. And that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. Nice. Um, one thing I didn't ask you before we started uh, the interview was 
Is this something you do as a full-time job or do you have a full-time job and then do this kind of on the side? I have a very full-time job for the moment and uh, I do this on the side. Um, I actually live two hours away from my full-time job uh, because we have, yeah, we have a mortgage on a house and I got a really good job up in Columbus. And so I have a studio and my job in Columbus and I commute an hour and 45 minutes one way because it's, it's a good job. It's got good benefits, good pay, all that sort of stuff. They're pretty, they work with me as far as like taking days off whenever I need to for conventions. It's, it's a good arrangement. Um, this, and up till this past year, I've never really wanted to go full time. That's something I'm very interested in doing and taking steps towards doing now. So I'm putting some groundwork into two or three other projects in addition to photography, but they're kind of, they're all cosplay related and they're all adjacent to photography and, and cosplayers. So it kind of hooks into the same, the same crowd and it will actually be working on solutions in the, in the community that I see that there are problems. And it's like, okay, let's, let's work on that. And to be able to do that to the point where, you know, I'm able to move more into a full-time thing next year is the goal. Now are those solutions you're creating, are they photography specific? Or Some just of cos them. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so some, some of them are specifically for uh, cosplayers and photographers, like problems, you know, being able to book together because every convention has different rules on what you can do, what you can't do, you know, and that's one of the hardest things is whenever you want to work with somebody and you want to shoot together, you know, you try to go through the convention and a lot of them are just like, here's the rules, this is what you can't do. I was like, that's fine. Tell me what I can do. No, 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 no. We don't want to have anything to do with that because that's, you know, that's manpower for them to have to manage that sort of stuff. And a lot of them don't want to do it. So I um, actually had just had a meeting with uh, one of my good friends here, my studio mate, Tim Evans, photography. And we're, we're putting together something very soon. Um, can't really give a lot of details about it, but it's, it's going to be something really, really beneficial to the community. Um, something that cosplayers and photographers alike can use. Conventions are going to love it because it, it fills a need in the community and it's going to be hands off for them. So I'll get you details with that as soon as it's ready. Very nice. Look forward to it. I've yeah. actually got something in the works too. I'll tell you about when this is done. I don't want to leak it. I know, I know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but before we really get into the nitty gritty of uh, the photography process, which is yeah. it's kind of the key reason why um, I wanted to have you on the show because there's got to be a lot of people out there that says, I want to take some pictures. I want them to be the best pictures I can take. Even if I'm an amateur, I'm just using my cell phone. Give me some tips or whatever. Yep. Um, but before we do that, do you have any stories that you're willing willing to share about some really <laughs> awesome people that you've worked with or better yet, someone who was an absolute horror to work with? You don't have to mention names. Yeah, I got you. Um, this, I, I, just, I run into a lot of more people that tend towards the awesome side in the cosplay community. Cause I mean, it's, if you're, if you're in there, it, it has this drama and stuff like that. You learn what to talk about, what not to talk about, who to talk to. And it's just kind of like, just like in real life. I mean, you know, you talk to aunt Susie, she'll gossip your ear off and it's just like, okay, I don't really talk to that person, but the awesome people to work with, God, the, the list kind of goes on Uh night mage. Of course, he was one of my, one of my first people that I've, Shot with, I've shot with him so much um, over the years. Super Casey is right up there as well. Um, worked a lot with her. Here lately, I've been doing a lot of work with uh, Erica Fett. She is local here to Columbus, actually, and I'm doing pretty much, I think, all of her uh, cosplay stuff now. And she she has a pretty big following on social media and stuff, so that's just that has opened up some doors and a lot more people seeing my stuff that wouldn't necessarily see it before. Um, Worked with my good friend Jamie Lee this past weekend, and that was a really fun shoot. Um, she just moved back from uh, California. She moved to Chicago, so we drove. We both drove like four hours on a Sunday, met in Indianapolis, and shot together. And we did some uh, really cool stuff for Eleven from um, Supernatural. So not Supernatural. God, sorry, I just watched Stranger Things. My bad. Stranger Things. Yes, God, I'm gonna get crucified for that. <laughs> And then uh, we did a really cool Jack Skellington in a graveyard, and it was it was fun because she was really wanting to do it at night, and I had to work the next day, so we did it at four o'clock in like full daylight. And because of me shooting with my style, I was able to make it look like it was complete night, 
we shot between two marble pillars. I'll send you the picture after this is done, but it turned out really, really nice. And it just kind of, we both had to take a minute. It was like, Oh God, I wasn't, my body wasn't ready, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was fun. Yeah. So I've, I've met a lot of amazing people. Um, met very few people who, who I don't care to work with again. Um, and it's just a lot of times because I was starting, I take full blame for that. I was starting out, I had misunderstandings or, you know, people would see me during a shoot or something and it's kind of transitioning. That's something people who want to do this more need to watch out for whenever you do transitioning from just shooting your friends all the time and Hey, that's such and such. How's it going, man? And stopping for a second to talk because you all know each other to shooting with actual paying clients. Some of them may not actually be that that understanding about it. And I didn't understand that until I had somebody leave a, a one star, pretty scathing one star review. It's still on my Facebook page. I, I, I won't take that off because I own it. You know, I, I effed up, I dropped the ball, but that was probably one of the best things that could have happened to me because it caused me to really look at my process and look at some of the stuff that I was doing and go, you know, that's fair. I, I need to work on this sort of stuff. So uh, it, it helped me put processes in place that make it super smooth now. So uh, whoever left me that one star, I own it and thank you. <laughs> I never thought I'd hear somebody thank someone for a one star review. But <laughs> hey, if I earned it, you know what? It's, it's, I'm a firm believer that you can't, you can't uh, affect what happens to you in life, but you can affect how you react to it. Yeah. So well, that's the mindset of a real pro. So whatever you've got Cheers. in the works, <laughs> whatever you got in the works, I'm sure is going to work out with that kind of mindset. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate. It. I hope so. And they didn't see the cup yet. Mm. I saw it. Ba -na 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 -na. <laughs> I love it. The mug that rules them all. That's right. <laughs> uh, so let's dive into some uh, photography yeah, specific man. questions, if you don't mind. Now, keep in mind during these questions, I'm speaking from the viewpoint of a broke ass cosplayer. Okay. Yep. I spend all my money on EVA foam and warbler and mm -hmm. costumes and, and whatnot. So I, I don't have anything mm -hmm. outside of my cell phone or a, a cheap camera, you know, digital. So, if you could give a tip that you feel would make the biggest impact on improving um, the quality of self-taken photographs with that kind of stuff, what, what, what tips would you give for that? I actually really enjoy using my, my cell phone camera a lot because I want to show people that you can take really good pictures with that. Um, the same fundamentals that apply to shooting with a camera they they come from the same fundamentals that are shooting with with your cell phone camera except for you don't really necessarily have as much control with your cell phone as like manual settings and stuff like that with your camera i can dial in things pretty pretty close to what they're going to need to be on my camera with the cell phone it does a lot of the stuff automatically and people will take a picture and go oh that looks like crap my cell phone is just no good Nah, I mean, you can you can do some really, really neat stuff with your cell phone camera. There's people who have made an entire career on Instagram of taking pictures of, of food, of people, of whatever with, with their cell phone camera. So um, use whatever camera you have. If that's just your cell phone for now, fantastic. Um, you know, there's a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that on there about learning composition, um, learning uh, what makes you know like the rule of thirds and stuff like that um, just basically what what's good lighting what's bad lighting if somebody's standing in front of a window and you want to get a picture of them more than likely unless you're going for a very specific type look with an automatic camera it's it's not gonna do it because that's a really intense situation for it to have to deal with and automatic stuff just doesn't really do that so well so um, yeah just kinda just have a friend or just take a uh, you know, something I, I actually got a skull here recently for a, some leggings I was designing. Get something like that. Take a flashlight and just shine it like this right here and go, wow, because you can see directly how the light uh, reacts as you move it around to the side. It'll cast shadows and stuff like that as you move it up and down. It'll give a very specific look. And that's how I learned is I just took a flashlight and played around. And once I actually got my flash, um, and even now, my the rig that I use is on a budget, dude. It's like, it, it's not as much. My entire flash kit is not as much as one flash that I've seen a lot of other photographers go, oh, yeah, do you use this and this? I'm like, dude, I'm, no way, man. I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
what is this rule of thirds? You said it as if I would know what that is, and I'm, I'm sure most people don't, so it might be helpful. They, they, they probably don't. Uh, for, and, and all the stuff that I have learned, don't think, oh, you know, I don't have money to go to school for photography and all these fancy terms. I have never had a lesson in photography in my life. It's just I've never done that. It's always been just watch a bunch of YouTube videos, jump in and learn. And I, I actually helped teach classes before I kind of sat in the classes myself just just because it's like the stuff that you pick up and learn. But um, rule of thirds is basically like if somebody's in the middle of a frame, if there's nothing around it specifically for a reason like uh, – a good example is the, the picture of Jamie that I was mentioning. She's between two marble columns and stuff. It frames her very well. There's a specific purpose for her to be in the center of that shot. A lot of times um, it works better if you see, like, if the shot is landscaped this way, if the person's off to one side and you have, like, a sunset or you have some other background over here, it gives it a little bit more, especially if they're, like, in the pose and they're looking this way, it implies motion to the picture. And you can leave this side over here open, and it, it's kind of like, okay, what are what are they looking at? It's it's kind of getting you thinking about the picture, whereas if they're just standing like straight in the middle of there, yeah, it technically shows what the person is, but it doesn't really help lend itself to that story at all. And if you think about comic books and stuff like that, you'll see a lot of things like that in comic books. They'll be on one side of the frame punching towards another one, you know, and they'll kind of foreshortening is another thing. That's basically where your fist is coming at the camera like that. I use that a lot in my stuff, and that came from from comic books. Actually, it came from other places before, but comic books is where I learned it. <laughs> Do you have a background in art? Because you're using a lot of words like composition and foreshadowing, and or not foreshadowing, whatever the word was you well, used. Foreshortening, sorry. Foreshortening. Yeah. Uh, yes, and that's, again, self-taught. Um, you know, I used to do a lot of painting and sketching and stuff like that. And I actually try not to use a lot of terms that people won't know because nobody likes to ask the questions. I love asking questions. So if I don't know something, I'll be like, yo, uh, that thing that you just said, what does that mean? Okay, cool. Thanks. And, you know, I'm, I'm always the guy in the group to ever, you know, the kind of lean over like, thanks, I didn't want to ask. I'm like, I got you, man. No problem. <laughs> I'll, I'll look stupid, and it's not that at all. It's just people people kind of have that notion about it. It's like, I don't want to look dumb. Dude, I am dumb. I am completely dumb about stuff. That's the only way that you learn is asking questions and watching YouTube. That's right. Well, <laughs> I can tell you that most cosplayers are self-taught, too. You know, you've got people Absolutely. out there like Bill Duran and Evil Ted that mm -hmm. have the tutorials, but, you know, it wasn't five or ten years ago that this was all kept really close Oh, no yeah. one would share the tips, and if if somebody created something, you would never know how they did it. So there's a lot of self-taught everything. And I is, and I am the exact opposite in that. I've, I get people all the time. It's like you know you have a really unique style. You don't need to share that with anybody. You don't need them to start copying your style. You don't want to give away your secrets. I will tell you actually on my Instagram and stuff like that. A lot of times here lately, I will have like a, a 60 second clip where it shows. This is before, here's a time lapse of me editing it, here's the EXIF data at the end of it, and EXIF data is basically, uh, it's kind of like a roadmap to how you shot something. It tells you all the settings that you use, so that will give somebody a good idea to go, okay, in this situation, if I want something like this, this is a starting point. And that's my big point in doing something like that, is you know, I learned by the people who were willing to share this stuff on YouTube, uh, one of the big guys that I watched was uh, called Frono's Photo. He's a uh, he's a yeah, just skinny white guy from Philadelphia, and he's got like a, a big afro, like and that's Bob Ross, very, bigger than Bob Ross. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> it's, it's it's huge. But he was the one telling, okay, here's a five minute portrait. Here's this. Here's that. And he literally has thousands of image, uh, thousands of videos on there, and I've watched a lot of them because he will go through. Okay, in this situation, this is what we're going for. And my favorite thing in the world was watching him and seeing the wheels fall off on some of these plans. I knew what he was going for. It didn't really work. And he's like, okay, this isn't working. This is why. So this is what we can do to kind of correct for that. I really want to make stuff like that specifically for the cosplay photography community and to help cosplay photographers and cosplayers because cosplayers, I mean – 
a lot of them have problems posing. That's one of the biggest things in the world is there's like, I don't, I don't take good pictures. I don't know how to pose. That's not all your responsibility as, as a cosplayer. Your photographer should be able to guide you and direct you. It's a collaboration. Everything with cosplay photography is not one or the other completely. It's a collaboration. It's like Venom, man, from, from Marvel Universe. We are Venom, not you or me, you know? <laughs> Got to be symbiotic. That's it. Hey, my man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a circle, just a circle around, we we're talking about cell phones and people that yeah. just take pictures with uh, their cameras. Yeah. I know there's some apps out there uh, from some of the YouTube videos that I've watched with, um, mm-hmm. can't even think of the name of the channel at this point. Anyway, uh, they use different apps that you mm-hmm. can control the focus. You can hold the focus. You can change the yep. exposure. Do you have any experience with that? Maybe recommend an app that's cheap. I, I have. I have a little bit with that sort of stuff. If I'm doing the manual controls, I don't normally go with my my camera though. Um, as far as apps that I use religiously, uh, Snapseed is one of them, and all the ones I'm going to give you are free. Uh, Snapseed is one of them. It has like a white background with a little green leaf. That's fantastic. They keep updating that. It's really, really, really good. Um, Photogene is another one. Photo G E N E. That is just kind of like an all-purpose toolkit. It does like all kinds of stuff. Um, those are really kind of the big two that I use for for that sort of stuff. Um, if I'm doing more than what what those two will allow me to edit, then I'm putting it into Lightroom. I do have a subscription to uh, Adobe's Lightroom. It's like 10 bucks a month, I think, and you get Lightroom and Photoshop now, which is fantastic. Because used to be that was one of the big things. It's like, you know, I'm not really making a lot of money on this. I can't afford paying $600 for Photoshop. I can't afford $150 a year for Lightroom. You know, for, for 10 bucks a month, it's it's fairly reasonable. You know, I mean, that's what people pay for Netflix. Yeah, I, th- I thought Photoshop was like 30 bucks a month when I looked into it like two or three years ago. A while back it was, but then they, they bundled it into a, a photographer's package and it has Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, they just split Lightroom into a couple of different things, but they also have a version of Lightroom that's for your mobile device. So your tablet and your, your phone and stuff, it can run a, a watered down version of Photoshop, but it still has a lot of controls on there. So between that, Snapseed, Photogene, those three right there will really help your editing and stuff like that. And so will uh, getting a torrent. Just download yes. it all. <laughs> Not, that's, I'm that's, recommending that. That's actually how I used to do it back in the day. And then, you know, it kind of got to where I was making money with it. So I bought photo, I bought Lightroom because 95% of the stuff that I do, I do very little Photoshopping. It's, it's all with shooting it, flash settings, light tricks, shutter speed, and stuff like that to get certain effects. And then uh, just kind of like putting the polish on it in Lightroom. I don't, I don't use Photoshop hardly at all. Now, for those of us that don't know what Lightroom is, how does that differ from Photoshop? Photoshop is kind of like a, uh, it's made specifically for digital creation. It's, it, it can edit photos. It can make the, if you want to paint, just get in there with like a, a tablet or something. If you want to get in there with a mouse and do some really breathtaking stuff, it can do it all. And Lightroom is something that came out years ago. Um, and it is specifically for um, speeding up your workflow with photography stuff. So it doesn't have a lot of this stuff for making com- compositions and stuff like that like Photoshop does. And where I use Photoshop for is a lot of the healing and cloning and stuff like that. Like if you know, there's like something uh, like a big white post or something sticking out of the ground over here, I'll, I'll go in and clone that out sometimes if I can't get it with Lightroom. Um, just just some stuff like that. That's the only thing that I use it for. But Lightroom is specifically for uh, just being able to, to put a bunch of pictures in there, set your settings on one of them. Like for weddings, uh, wedding receptions, it's really handy because the stuff that I do and cosplay photographers do, every picture is going to be a little bit different. So you can't really just like mass batch everything. But um, for wedding photography and stuff like that, like for receptions, it's super handy for that because you can set your settings like on one of them select two or 300 images, hit apply to all, and it'll go done. Fantastic. I know photography friends of mine like Photoshop better because that's what they're used to and their workflow is geared toward that. Um, Me personally, once I found Lightroom, I kind of geared it towards that. And even the way that I edit in Lightroom is 
fairly, I shoot weird and I edit weird. So, um, you know, yeah, I mean, and, and that's the cool thing about it is you can find there's room for you. However you want to do this, there's room for you. Uh, you can customize your workflow. You can customize the way that you shoot to, to suit your niche, to shoot to suit the look that you want to get from your product. And there will always be people who will see your look, your specific way of shooting and go, that's what I've been looking for. There's with as many people out there, there's room for you no matter what you do. And um, <clears throat> what would you say would be the biggest mistake that you see people do that they can change to improve their DIY photos, you know, if they're just taking them at home? Just the, the biggest mistake, your pet peeve. The pet peeve is thinking that a better camera means better photos all the time. Um, unless you have absolutely, and this even kind of goes for, you know, your cell phones, unless you've maxed out what you're able to do with a certain camera, stick with it, man. The, the camera that I use every day, all day long is a, is a Nikon D 7,000 It's considered an entry level. Uh, you've got like your cheaper ones, like the D 3000 and stuff. And then you've got, okay, this is kind of like when you're starting to get a little bit serious, but not. The big ones, you know, I see people have three, four, five thousand dollar bodies just for their cameras and two thousand dollar lenses. Dude, I'm on a budget, bro. I don't have that kind of money for that. So I got, I got my body for a uh, my camera body for a, a deal. Whenever they had the new one come out, I bought that one, and I've got like a hundred and fifty dollar lens that I use with. It. I, I have one lens that I shoot everything with. You don't have to have a bunch of gear. You don't have to see something and go, oh, this person used that. I need to go out and buy that. Learn what you got. Learn it inside out. Learn your settings. Uh, once you learn your settings, you'll be able to apply that to cell phones. Whatever camera that you pick up, you'll be able to apply it towards that. And that, more than anything else, will make your pictures better. Okay. And you, you mentioned a, a specific Nikon camera. Yeah. Uh, so if somebody was wanting to improve their, you know, self photography mm -hmm. um what would be the minimum required equipment uh, you mentioned a camera mm -hmm. besides that camera which i want you to mention again so i can write it down and put in the notes gotcha. what else what other kind of low budget equipment can people get to really improve their their photography game if you will absolutely um for just cameras and lenses i highly recommend uh, i shoot nikon personally um, I have a lot of friends who shoot. The, the funny thing is with the studio that I'm in right now, there's three of us that, that are all together here. One of us shoots Nikon, one shoots Canon, one shoots Sony. So we can't swap lenses, we can't swap equipment, but we but the, the basics are sound through all of them. So whenever we find something cool, we can take those settings and go, dude, you have to check this out here. And we will literally like just play around. It's like, holy crap, yeah, we got to do this. So um, basically any, any camera that you can get that will shoot raw mode, I highly recommend because you don't want to bottleneck your something in yourself into something that's just JPEG. Um, and those are file formats. JPEG is basically pretty much everything on the internet. If it's a picture or whatever, it's a JPEG because JPEG will flatten any information in there. It flattens it all together. It makes it, it compresses it so your, your web pages load a lot faster. Um, whenever you're doing your editing and stuff, you don't want to lose all of that information. So basically a raw file, like say the JPEG that I kick out for some stuff is between six or seven megabytes, which is fairly good size, but that's full res, that's for prints. The raw file that goes with that is about 25 megabytes. And that's because anything like white balance, a lot of the, this is going to be a lot of terminology and stuff. Uh, white balance, exposure, uh, contrast, saturation, uh, hue, all this sort of different stuff that you can do in camera during that time, that is into your raw file. And you can, it's basically giving you the recipe and all the ingredients and go, okay, you can change this after the fact. Whereas the JPEG is you making the cake and giving somebody a cake. So you can tweak it and um, raw file, the, the shooting in raw will really let you grow later on. So that's why I say make sure you get something that will let you shoot raw. And almost anything does nowadays. I mean, down to, I think Nikon's lower, lower end that I would recommend is probably the 3000 line. They may be up to like 3,500 now or 5,000 or something, but it's like a D5000, D3000. 
that line of cameras. Uh, Canon, I think EOS Rebel, they may have something a little bit lower than that, but that's where you can take the lens off and it basically gives you freedom for later on once you start getting things together and go, oh, okay, this is this is pretty cool. Now I can grow in this. So um, get a fifth, get a fifty millimeter lens, no matter which one that you shoot with. You want to look for the fifty mm lens. Why fifty? Fifty is basically the way that your eyes see things. Whenever you look at life, it's looking through what is considered like fifty fifty millimeter, and that's basically the focal length and stuff like that. It's how things are. Uh, it's the perspective. So if you shoot lower than that like a, say an 18 millimeter or something, that's whenever you start seeing that bow, like that fisheye, like on GoPros. and The fisheye lens. The fisheye, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, a true fisheye is down to like five or 10 or something like that, and that's a significant bow. But um, the way that we see the world is, is probably about 50 millimeters for me. Um, I found that to get all of the person in focus with the 50, I would have to do like this and take one big step back because my brain was framing things as like, okay, I know what this looks like, all crap. And to get what was in my brain, so I had to switch to a 35 millimeter, and that's a little bit of a wider angle. It, it lets me get closer to people at conventions. Um, but the 50 is a lot cheaper than the 35. 35 is like maybe 300 bucks, I think. And the, the 50 is like, I think you can pick it up for like 100 bucks, maybe 125, which is dirt cheap for lenses. And also, that's that's what's called a prime lens. Prime lenses are really important because um, they don't zoom, so they don't have multiple pieces of glass. They have like one set of glass things to go through, and that means your images are going to be a lot sharper. And they come with free shipping, right? Uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime. Dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're smart, and have Amazon Prime, yeah. Uh, well, you're using some pretty technical terms, but you did a great job yeah. of explaining a lot of them. So Thanks. let's just uh, let's get techie here. Yeah. Um, I could tell you that a lot of the amateurs, like myself, we hear phrases, uh, things like the importance of capturing something in camera or uh, adjust your shutter speed. It, it's pretty much jargon for most of us, yeah. but... I know these small things make a huge difference. So could you talk a little bit about the importance of capturing things in camera with the raw file, like you said, versus trying to edit uh, post shoot? Absolutely. Um, one thing that I noticed a lot is whenever I would shoot something, I would say, ah, I can get that in post. Like there was a, you know, something sitting over here that was kind of in frame. Everything else looked good. I was like, I'll just take that out in post. It's not a problem whenever you're shooting 5, 10, 15 images during a convention or just out with friends. But whenever you're going to a convention, and normally whenever I go to con conventions now, I book probably anywhere between 20 and 30 shoots. And then I have what's called turbo shoots in between. So I will shoot probably 1,000 to 1,500 images. Whenever you blow up, I, I can take that out and post times six or 700 or 800 that come out of that it becomes a huge time sink. So the the value of learning to do things in camera is your time. I mean, you know, we you mentioned earlier, uh, time is the currency of the world. That's, you know, we trade time for money. It's, it's, it's not really money. We can always make more money. We can't make more time. So if you can get things tighter in camera and just, you know, it's, it's like anything that you do, anything, any craft that you do whatsoever, um, whenever you kind of get something and you're like, Hey, I like this. So I like doing this way a lot. Um, so you're going to kind of follow that and get better and better and better at it. Each time that you practice each thing that you do, you're, you're tightening that down just a little bit to where you're doing more in camera and less in editing and stuff like that, or, or setting up your shots, knowing whenever I edit, I'm going to do this. Gotcha. Yeah. I didn't think about it on that scale, you know, cause I'm like, I take three or four pictures and I'm done, right. you know, but when you're taking a couple hundred or a couple thousand even, yeah. <laughs> yeah, get it all in camera up front, get it good. I get that. It helps a lot. And, and something else too is the, the tighter that you get stuff, um, you know, the less, uh, another pet peeve of mine is people relying on a really fast shutter speed. Like they'll see, uh, a, like I like to do jump shots. So we'll have like a, a, a spider, uh, actually a spider girl, uh, EXF cosplay did a really, really cool jump shot here recently with me. 
And uh, she, it was just like, okay, one, two, three. And she jumped up, did like that right there, kicked her heels up to her butt, got it, good. Let's move on. And people assume whenever they see it frozen like that, that I'm just waiting there. It's like, you can't, whenever you start shooting with off camera flash and stuff like that, you can't do that because your flashes won't pop that fast. So you learn tricks, you learn how to anticipate, you learn how to get that shot the first time. And then whenever you get it, you move, you check it, make sure it looks good. Then you move on to another one. So whenever, whenever I'm doing a shoot, I'll get 20, maybe 25 images that I deliver to a client and they'll get to pick, you know, five, seven, 10, however many what they ordered from that. But I want them to have a hard, and people's like, that's not very many images. You know, I had somebody deliver like 150 to me. I'm like, you still have to pick the same thing. You know, it just makes it harder on the photographer because they have to cull through that stuff and pick out the good ones versus the bad ones. And well, we have eight that look almost exactly the same. How do I pick between those? And then the cosplayer has to look at all those and go, holy crap. What, what's the, and it's just like going to the eye doctor, A or B, B or C, you know? And that's, that's that. just, I do too. And, and everybody does. Everybody does because it wastes their time. Uh, if you don't mind, I want to go back to something you mentioned about 10 minutes ago. You were talking about yeah. posing. Yes. Now, uh, there was an episode, I don't know if you even watched the show, but How I Met Your Mother. A little there bit. Was an, there was an episode where they were trying to catch the guy Barney taking a bad photo, and they never could. About that. I never take a bad picture. Aha! Got it. A bad picture. Is it, though? a chip where's the chip he'd be on the toilet or whatever and when they snap the picture he's adjusting his tie oh yeah and there's somebody else that no matter how well she posed she was just like making a horrible face i'm that girl no matter yeah. what i do i take horrible pictures do you have any advice for us horrible picture takers that always look like we're you know getting our foot stomped on when somebody clicks that shutter other than shoot with me um, and, and I say that not because it's like, oh, wow, I'm really good. It's because I actually love shooting with people who are like, I don't, I don't take good pictures. I'm brand new to this. I've never done a photo shoot before. I get more excited over that than if somebody would be like, hey, this is Jessica Negri over here. She wants to shoot. I would get excited over that because I, I love her work. I respect her. But, you know, I get more excited over shooting the, the first time cosplayers or the people who don't think that they take good pictures because it's a lot of times you guys you guys can get two thirds of the way there, but it's the photographer's responsibility at that point to go okay. And this is something that I do a lot carried over from my uh, senior session days, shooting a lot of seniors and stuff like that. I had to learn the poses. I had to learn what looks good, what doesn't look good. And again, YouTube doing a lot of research on it, just taking friends out and shooting, going okay, click, twist a little bit, click, twist a little bit, click. And I'll pay attention to what they're saying. They'll be like, you know, whenever you kind of told me what to do, you pointed and then guided it that way. That really helped. I like that. Remember that. Because now whenever you see me shoot at a con, and even now talking, I use my hands a lot. <laughs> so I'll, I will point. I'll be like, okay, uh, take your right shoulder this way. Good. Right there. Chin up. Chin this way. Good. Uh, chin up a little bit more. And I'm, I'm constantly guiding them with my hands because you don't know from my perspective – how this looks to the camera, you know, and even people who pose all day long, they can get probably the really, really good ones can get 90% of the way there. Very, very few people do I work with that can pose and I don't need to edit anything with them. Not edit that. I don't need to tweak a little bit of body positioning or whatever, because that is what really will make your, your photos pop is whenever the person keeps that sort of stuff in mind, instead of just flat at the camera they're twisting, they're putting their hands up, they're looking towards the light or whatever you want to do. And you smile because that right there, mm. uh -huh, yeah, I have no problem doing <laughs> girly poses. I'll lay down on the ground and, you know, I mean, and, and a lot of times, a lot of people have troubles. It's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I'm like, okay, Ricky Bobby, let's do this, you know. <laughs> but well, I'll kick you in the head. There you go. So I, I, I get more excited over shooting with somebody like that who doesn't think that they take that because that's an opportunity for me circling all the way back around to help their self-esteem, to help them be like, I can, 
you know what? I can do this. This is something I look pretty freaking awesome in that picture. So maybe I, maybe it wasn't me all along, you know, you know, gotcha. Um, if you ever shoot me, I, I don't lack self-esteem. I'm a cocky asshole. <laughs> but you can still build me up if you want to. That's totally fine. That's no problem. And I'd, I'd very much like to do some shoots with you, man. I love your Hellboy. You showed me some pictures of that. That's pretty dope. Thank you. Thank you. I I've appreciate got, that. I've got some lighting tricks that would really make that pop. You know, I actually, I want a photo shoot with you. I just never mm -hmm. cashed in on it when uh, Night Mage and Casey did the giveaway last year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I donated. Oh, that's the, right. The that's right. Heck yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We'll make it happen. We'll get together. I, like, I, I never crossed paths with you. So I was just like, <laughs> it just got out of hand. I just forgot all about it. <laughs> well, now that, we've, now that we've reconnected here, I will most definitely make sure we'll, we'll compare uh, convention schedules and we'll make it happen, man. All right. Um, let's talk about hiring a photographer for those mm -hmm. that are interested in taking that leap. They've never done it. What, what should someone expect the first time they go to a professional type of a, a photo shoot? Gotcha. Um, every photographer is different, so it's very important. Um, whenever you go, typically the way that it's done right now, like I said, I've got some stuff in the works, but um, the way that it's done right now is whenever you're going to a convention, you will go to their page or go to typically like a, a group that somebody has made. Okay, this is the uh, Colossal Con photography group. And you'll have photographers going, hey, here's some samples of my work. Here's my rates. A lot of people will shoot for free. Um, a lot of people will shoot, okay, here's how much you pay up front. This is what, how many pictures do you get? You'll get all the pictures. Some people, where I fall in that is, okay, you get, this year it's going to be, you get 20 minutes worth of time, which doesn't sound like a lot. But we roll pretty quick through it, and it's fun, and it's not rushed. So in 20 minutes, you're going to get you're going to get more than your money's worth out of it. You're going to get a lot of pictures. You're not going to be able to to pick all of them. I I freaking guarantee it. So, um, but you know, I'll do that and have okay. You pay this much down. You pay this much later on, and you get to select this many pictures from it. And then you get kind of the higher end people who will charge a certain amount and go okay. Then you get like the the full compositions from like one or two pictures, you know, and they'll put you in space with all these crazy effects and stuff like that on it, you know? So it, you, you have people all the way through and you really have to, you really have to do your homework. I mean, as, as much as nobody wants to hear that, uh, whenever you're looking at photographers, take a look at their page, see if they have a review section on their page. I think that's very important. And I, I recommend that all photographers do that. It can be a double-edged sword because, like I said, whenever you goofed up, somebody leaves a one-star review on there with a with you know like half a page worth of stuff. You know, you 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 get the good with the bad, but that kind of drives you to do better because you want people to to be happy. And you know, I got a I got a uh, some of the reviews that I read from people that I shoot with that are first times or that are new to cosplayer that are just very self-conscious and stuff. It it just you know, it makes me cry sometimes almost. It's like I didn't realize that the shoot meant that much to them and that the pictures that they got back helped their self-esteem that much. So, um, but yeah, definitely do your research. Um, if you know, uh, if you see other friends like that page, contact, especially if you see them advertising with those friends, contact your friends. Ask them, hey, how was, how was the shoot? Were they, you know, I'm, I'm kind of new to this. Were they patient? Uh, did they give you directions? You know, what, what was the process after that? Ask a lot of questions. Uh, contact the photographer directly. Make sure that you clarify things ahead of time. I always preach um, communication, communication, communication. You can never have too much communication um, because that answers a lot of the questions ahead of time. So whenever both of you guys get together, everything can go a lot more smoothly and they know what to expect after the fact. So they're not they're not like that person that Sunday night on the way home from the con is like, whoo, got my work done. Hey, uh, so when can I expect the photos? Don't give us a couple days to breathe for the love of God, please. <laughs> the, the, the analogy that I use is cosplayers do this work, crazy amounts of work to get the costumes ready weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks ahead up to the convention. Then we have some overlap where the, the photographer and the cosplayers doing the work. 
then the photographer has weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks where we're carrying on, on that work afterward to get the best representation of your costume at all. It's going to take time, but you need to find somebody who, whose workflow and whose attitude and stuff like that matches up with what you're comfortable doing because some people are, are okay with somebody who does great work but is kind of a butthole. If they can handle that type of attitude, that's their prerogative. That drives me nuts personally. I want to punch those people in the face. But I was like, no, you're you're representing the rest of us. Don't tell people. There's nicer ways to say what you just said. Don't do not do that. But that's their prerogative. People still work with them. Whatever. But, um, yeah, so just, just out, always ask around. Talk directly to the photographer. Make sure that you answer any questions or ask them any questions that you have. It's like, okay. How much do I need down? Um, do you need it all at once ahead of time? Uh, okay, how much? How many pictures do I have? Do I get print rights? That's a huge one. If you're a cosplayer who is looking to either now or later sell prints like through Etsy stores or at a table or something like that, if you start guesting, make sure you ask about print rights. Not copyright release, is that something totally different? Ask about print rights because some photographers like myself, I include those with my package cost. Some photographers will be like, okay, well, I have a lower package cost for people who just want the, the files to put out on social media. Then if you want the full res and the print rights, then it's X amount per picture. It's going to be different for each cosplayer. Just take a little bit of time. I know that I know that making the costumes and stuff really eats up a lot of time. Don't wait till the day of or the week of. I recommend probably about a month and a half to two months out if you're looking to book a shoot. Start looking through the pages, seeing who's posting stuff, um, see who posted stuff the year before. If you really like somebody's work, you know, check them out. If they check out, then save up and save up and try it, you know. And, and if you find some, go ahead. Yeah. Finish. I was gonna, I was gonna say if if you find somebody that you really click with, like a lot of my clients and me, we're we're friends outside of conventions. I mean, I've I've made so many not acquaintances, like friend friends, because we click so well. So I've got people who book me seven, eight, ten times a year sometimes. And it's because they have a new costume and they know, they said, in my head, I saw it with your lighting style. I really want this. And I know that we're going to have fun because I don't have a whole lot of hangout time at cons because I'm shooting sometimes 14 hours a day. And you know, I don't, I don't like to tell people no. So if somebody is going through the trouble of contacting me and being like, hey, I've got this costume. I want to shoot specifically with you. I take that as a huge compliment. I mean, the, the amount of time that they've put into that, if they want to contact me, shoot, man. You know, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to work them in as best I can. And my friends have to make sure that I eat and drink water and stuff like that. Jessica, that's you. Thank you. <laughs> Just don't ask to shoot any babies. No babies. <laughs> no babies. Uh, well, I know you can't speak for every photographer out there, and I'm not saying that you need to name a price or anything, but could you give us a ballpark figure of what someone should expect just as a general idea of what a photo shoot might cost so they don't go out and contact some people and they say it's $3,000 when it's supposed right. to be 500 Just right. a ballpark. For for me personally, what I am changing to this coming year is you get a 20-minute session. I'll put three of those so I can do like three per hour instead of half an hour. A lot of people will do half an hour or hour type shoots. So it, it really depends on how long that you – if you're comfortable posing, if you – like with me, the people that I work with a lot, we'll, we'll spend 10 minutes and get the shoot done and then just hang out and talk for 10 minutes. I kid you not. And they will have more than enough pictures to pick from. Um, my stuff starts at what I do is I charge $40 to, to book your session. And that comes with one image that is fully fully edited. You get the print release and stuff like that from that. And that's with that. If you want to buy additional packages, my, my stuff typically runs like $15 a picture. So if you want to buy a pack of like three more so you get four or if you want to buy five more or ten more, you know, there's percentage markoffs for each one of those. Um, I would say for somebody who, for a photographer who is kind of starting out, um, look at their style, look at the quality of work that they produce and look at how they talk to people and interact. Probably around 50 bucks is what you should expect for somebody who's been doing it. Like I've been doing this for four years. 
for somebody who's been doing with that and they kind of start getting a better portfolio, they start being able to offer more than just the, the same point and shoot. This looks like everybody else. If you get somebody with a very specific style that you're looking for, anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks. Um, I don't really know of very many that charge over $100, but there are specifically like some fashion photographers and stuff like that who have a very refined look, a very uh, a very clean editing process and stuff like that because they shoot fashion. They know their crap, you know? So um, those may be under, over 100 bucks, but I'm not, I'm not really familiar. And I've actually kind of made it a point whenever I was starting out not to look at other people's pricing. I think that's another trap that beginning photographers look at. They look at other stuff and go, well, everybody's charging 40 bucks. I have to charge 40 bucks because that's what the market is. The only person who can tell you what your time is worth is you. And whenever you look at somebody else's stuff and go, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. Your style may be completely different than that. You may be delivering so much more to the client or maybe your stuff isn't worth 40 bucks. And I think that's something too, is somebody gets a professional grade camera and gets a decent lens and they go out and start slapping $30 on their shoots and their stuff looks like junk because they haven't taken the time to learn your settings, to learn composition, to, to practice. I don't think that once you get your first camera, and I don't think you should be doing paid shoots off the, off the bat. I, I shot for a year, almost a year and a half for free before I started getting what I consider my style locked into place and where people kind of knew what to expect whenever they shot with me. It was going to look a certain way. It was going to be a certain way. The shoot was going to go a certain way because I'd spent a year doing that. With Sorry, I'm giving, I'm giving like, uh, yeah, back then was a 50 mil, yeah. <laughs> So I'm I'm giving everything like an essay answers. I'm sorry, but I just oh no no make... that's fine that's fine. The more information, the better. You've given good. us a lot of a lot of good uh, nuggets, if you would. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are at uh, seventy minutes. Ten of those sorry. are probably talking uh, ahead of time. No, I yeah. love it. I love it. Good good. Um, but I do want to uh, kind of wind it down. And if you could, to help wind it down, could you impart? single bit of advice even if you mentioned it previously such as um, investing in a certain kind of lens um, for those people who are looking to get better photos of their cosplay what would that advice be from a cosplay standpoint or from a photographer yeah, standpoint from cosplayers wanting okay. better images gotcha. would you recommend doing the extra work to learn or just to make the effort to contact the portrait dude everybody can always feel free to contact me I never want money to be an issue with why people don't shoot with me and I have things in place to where I can do what whatever your budget I can work with you there are also a lot of other very talented photographers that I can that I can recommend in the in the community that I know will treat you well um, so yeah if anybody has any questions or something be like hey I'm going to such and such and that's one of the things that I'm working on now is, is getting a way to where cosplayers and photographers and conventions can all like network together and to see, okay, well, my friend refers this person, they've shot with them, that's great. The, the biggest thing that I can tell a cosplayer to help is, um, you know, experiment, play around. Once you get one costume nailed in, don't just put it in the closet and go watch TV until a week before the con and take it out and retouch it and you're good. Spend that time to to try different makeup techniques. You know, if you're doing Harley Quinn or something like that, everybody that's Harley Quinn and Deadpool is one that people see a lot at conventions and they kinda oh god, there's another Harley. I love it because I have seen some of the most unique versions of those two characters ever. Because Did people you see take the guy a, dressed as Harley Quinn at the Cincinnati Comic Expo? Yes. Yep. He was hilarious. I did. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> and I, I love seeing um, one of my friends, Ian. He does a fantastic uh, Harvey Quinn, is what he calls it. And it looks really, really good because he's taken it and he's made it his own. That's, that's probably from a cosplayer standpoint. Take it and make it your own. You know, practice, play, do different makeup techniques and stuff like that. If you see something cool, there's so many uh, tutorials and stuff like that out on YouTube and Facebook. Go watch a lot of this stuff. Spend less time, I say wasting time, but just kind of vegging out 
and spend more time kind of investing in this hobby that a lot of us love. You know, I'm not saying you have to. That's my recommendation from a cosplay photographer standpoint. Um, my biggest thing that I tell people all the time is pick two things about your photography that you hate and find a way to fix that in camera. For me, I wanted to be able to shoot anybody, anywhere, anytime, and still not get a bunch of people photo, and I didn't want people to photobomb. So whenever I started looking up what cosplay photography was, and I would see all this, especially Deadpools, you guys, man, whenever uh, I'd see them be like, in the background, or all of us have seen those pictures. It's like this beautiful shot has all kinds of people in the background, and this one guy in the back's like, whoa! That drives me insane. So that's actually how I found my style with the, it's called a stopped down background. Um, and the settings to do that are technically stuff that you shouldn't use according to the rules of photography. I tell people my settings and a lot of other photographers are like, whoa, hey. And I've actually had people tell me that was like, you don't, you should never use those settings inside. You should never do this. You need to change it and do this. And I was like, magazines don't mind. <laughs> my clients don't mind. What do you care? You know, it's, and I, I, I get a little bit feisty about that, but that's, that's my biggest advice is, is find two things about your photo. What was you going to say? Go ahead. I was going to say, didn't one of your images just went on the co uh, cosplay zine yes. magazine or something? Yep. We got the, uh, uh, we got the cover of cosplay zine this past month. That's one with Erica Fett that I actually took here at the studio right down back there. Uh, you can't see that, but we have like an overpass, and it has a lot of neat concrete and stuff. We shot her over there, um, and I was in three different magazines this month for uh, Cosplay Culture. If you guys go pick that up, that has a really good Hellboy uh, makeup tutorial. Speaking of makeup tutorials, um, to where they came out in the studio, we went through the steps of prepping, you know, prepping your face, what makeup they used. They gave brands. They gave very specific stuff, step by step by step. Um, I'm going to have a blog go up now that that's been published. We shot that like two or three months ago and we can't, we can't share anything until it goes out publicly. So that's just like, Oh my God, this is killing me. This is one of my favorite shoots that I've ever done and I can't show anything yet. So, uh, but yeah, I highly recommend you pick up cosplay culture. Um, I'm in that one. Then skin and ink magazine has a feature with Erica Fett in it. Skin and Ink next, next month is going to have one with uh, my buddy Ninja. He does a really killer Joker. Um, Freaks and Geeks this past month had a set with, with Ninja. And then, uh, yeah, Cosplay Zine. So kind of got stuff all over the place. That's the way to do it. Just keep throwing the spaghetti, it. see what I sticks. I love it. That's it, man. And it's nice whenever they contact me. It's like, hey, we want you to shoot this for us. I'm like, heck yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You want me to be in your magazine? Sure. Absolutely. And I will not shoot babies. As long as they, my, I, tell pe I tell people I've tried shooting babies a couple times, and with my lighting style, that's kind of where my brain goes automatically. And I was like, well, why don't you shoot babies? I was like, my babies look like Nordic baby gods of war. It's just like this baby has seen some stuff, man, because I don't, I don't shoot that really soft, you know, like typical baby stuff. I shoot hard style, you know, the, the stuff that I shoot is, is dark and contrasty and punchy. And I mean, it, you know, it don't work well with babies. Yeah. I don't like babies. <laughs> uh, well, before we wrap this up, I know you got some things you can't really talk about, some things that aren't quite ready to be talked about, but right. is there anything that you do want to share that uh, people might want to know about that's coming up here on the horizon for you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, um, now that I'm, caught up on my uh my backlog this is literally the first time in three and a half years i've been caught up on my backlog of stuff and it's been because of some of the changes that i put into place a year ago so because i've got this little bit of time i'm, I'm working on a couple like i said the projects that i'm doing but i'm also going to be putting out a, a self-published magazine and uh still haven't quite figured out the name for it yet i'm thinking of the not so daily dude because that's what I do for my, my blog, because I don't want to commit to the daily do, because I know for a fact I'm not going to be able to do that. So the not-so-daily dude is, is very tongue-in-cheek. Whenever I tell people that, they're like, my God, that's you. I could just see you smiling when you wrote that. I'm like, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically going to be all of the stuff that I either shoot or edit like throughout the month. If I do a shoot with somebody, they'll get a piece in there. And the reason for that 
is I was wanting to, to come up with something that would be a, a good organic way of getting more people's because we have some like seriously talented cosplayers that are just really nervous or just don't know social media that well or Facebook just sucks and won't let you have any reach anymore. Zuckerberg. But <laughs> I know we're going back with Tom in MySpace. Oh my gosh, Tom. One of my friends has Tom as their profile picture and it freaks me out on Facebook every time. And I was like, oh God, he followed me. But um, so basically what I, what I wanted to do was have something to wear. You know, whenever I shoot with somebody like, you know, Erica, she has like a million and a half followers on Instagram. Her stuff gets out in front of a lot of eyes. And what I wanted to do was have it to where, you know, the people that I shoot with like that and the people who this is their first time shooting, they just came up with a cosplay name. They're super excited. They just made their first page. They've got like five followers, you know, and one of those is their mom. But um, and, and that's where that's where we all start. That's where we all start on this stuff. Don't let anybody tell you to be ashamed of that because that is where everybody freaking started. But I wanted to come out with something, and the magazine just kind of clicked for that, um, to where I can publish people and have their cosplay name and their, their Instagram and their Facebook down here to where whenever people buy a magazine because they're in it and they go, hey, I'm right here. This is me. Whoa, check out that Harley Quinn or – Dude, look at this Deadpool over here. Look at this. Oh, my gosh, that's Night Mage. Yeah, I love Night Mage. And they're going through it, and it opens them up to a bunch of other cosplayers that they they may have never seen on social because the reality that we all deal with is social media. You have to have something that catches people's attention because this right here is the world that we live in. You swipe, 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 and unless you catch their attention between here and here for that reload, you're gone. I you're thought gone. you were shooting money. No, 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 not, not shooting money. That's, that's like swipe, swipe, <laughs> swipe, swipe, swipe. And unless you catch something between that swipe, and that's why I tell people I, I halfway joke about it, but on my side I say I want to make images that punch people in the face and make them take a second look. And whatever you're scrolling down through, I want something that jumps out as like, whoa, that's different. That's not, that's not a picture. That's a portrait. That's a little bit different. Yeah. And this magazine you're 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 thinking about is this is going to be a print, not just digital? Correct. Yeah. So it's going to be uh I actually am good friends with uh Justin, the guy who was putting out iCosplay magazine. And you know, I did some talking to him about it because he's got a lot of experience and stuff with that. And I was in their magazine a few times and he's actually in the group that I play uh video games with. We call it, it's called the Booty Palace. But it's got a lot of uh, yeah, I know, right? What do you it's get there? A, uh, <laughs> Uh, What's in the booty? <laughs> can't tell you. That's a secret. But it's it's a lot of cosplayers and cosplay um, photographers and stuff like that who just get together. We play Overwatch a lot. We play uh, they play some PUBG and Diablo and stuff like that. But we can all get together and talk and joke about the community and what's going on and just kind of have tea some... bag each other. We do, yeah. You know, You're we got dead, a Hanzo man. We got a Hanzo man in there. It's like tea bag him, tea bag him. Yeah. <laughs> so we we do that occasionally. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, you know, I, I talked to him and kind of got some feedback on what he used and some suggestions and stuff like that. So it's it's going to be an actual printed printed publication that you really good quality uh, that you can go to a website and buy your copy of it. I don't know. I don't have a price point exactly, um, but it's it's going to be reasonable. I want to make it to where people can can be excited for being in something that you can actually hold in your hands and get in the mail and go, holy crap, I'm in a magazine. Even if it's something that I just self-published, people would be surprised at how many of the magazines and stuff like that started out with people who just one, – one or two people, one guy or girl that had an idea and it was like, hey, I'm going to do this. And then it just kind of took off from there. You know, I, I want to get people's name out there. I want to be able to have a, a good way that doesn't feel all cheesy and, hey, you know, you tricked me into looking at your stuff. No, I want this to be something that's that's – you know, about the genuine. community, genuine. And, and because I, I love this community so much, you know, I mean, they've, I, I don't remember what I did before this. I played a lot of video games. I remember that, but seriously, it's just like, I, this, this consumes so much of my life now. You know, like I said, I, I, uh, I work almost two hours away from home. I work a 40 hour week and I'm doing this 25 to 25 to 30 hours a week on top of that. Just because I, I love it so much. I mean, and I, I don't sleep 
I love it that What's much. What's it going to take <laughs> for you to take that leap into doing it full time? If it was me solo, I would have done it last year. dollars a year. <laughs> uh, not quite that much, but I've got a wife and four kids. So, four. Uh, four, yeah, four very, very beautiful, uh, interesting kids. <laughs> I love them to pieces, but yeah. So, uh, but you won't take yeah. pictures of them when they're babies. I took pictures of them when they were babies. That was back when I was still doing that sort of stuff. Now I just dress them. I let them dress up we'll, like the day after co- uh, Halloween. We'll go out and I'll be like, go ahead and get two or three costumes each because they're like $5 each or something. Oh, yeah. And then we'll just keep them in their room and they'll be like, hey, uh, this is Saturday. We're going to the park. Can I dress up like Superman? I'm like, that means better, but I admire your dedication. Have at it. You know? <laughs> So, you know, I'll just let them do that and we'll do some fun shoots. And, you know, I, I will take the time on those ones to edit them up a little bit to have like super speed effects and stuff. And it's, they get a kick out of it. So, I bet. Um, well, I, I know that I'm going to already add all your information down in the um, description of this video, but do you have a preference? on where people can reach out to contact you, hire you, or just troll you on the internet? Hey, it happens, man. Uh, yeah, uh, I am on mainly Facebook and Instagram are the big two right now. Uh, Facebook, if you look up The Portrait Dude, just uh, all one word. I think if you put The Portrait Dude cosplay, like just one word, my name will pop up. I also have my personal account that has The Portrait Dude. If it has a picture of this ugly mug, that's not the right one. If it has a picture of a cosplayer, then that's the right one to use. So Does somebody stole the- your face? No, no, no. It's it's me. It's it's a just a shot account. of me on my on my separate account. Yeah, I've got my page and I actually have two separate accounts. I have like my personal non photography stuff because I was you know, I love cosplayers, but I don't want them to know everything about my personal life and my family and my kids until we kinda had that level of friendship. And I was getting people who I'd shot with one time going, hey, you know, I saw where, you know, your son did this and this. Congratulations. I'm like, not okay, you know. And it's just kind of I'm, – I'm never on my real account. I'm always on my photography account anymore. People's like, I haven't seen you on here in like six months. I'm like, I haven't been on there in six months. Yeah. You get, Jared, you get Jared from Subway following your oh, personal God. account. It's like, no, no thanks, buddy. No thanks, no man. Thanks. Peace out. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, that, just look up the portrait dude on that. And then uh, everything else, literally everything else, Instagram, Snapchat. I have a Tumblr. I don't use Tumblr anymore. Um, pretty much everything is just the portrait dude, one word. That was actually one reason why I picked the name is it had like zero internet footprint. So, yeah, so you didn't have to get the portrait dude 1743. Right. And I, I'm super, super thankful for that. So it's just kind of like, you know, I was talking with some friends one day, and I wanted to kind of find something better than Wesley Smith photography. And I say, I say, dude, a lot. And you know, I I don't want to take pictures. I want to take portraits. That was like a very big thing for me. And I got portrait artist as my title on my business cards. And I was like, portrait, 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 dude, port. Oh, the portrait dude. And as soon as I said that to some of my friends, I was like, oh my god. So seriously, like I went home immediately. I bought the dot com. I got all of the social media stuff just immediately because even if I wasn't using it, I didn't want to have to go back and do that later on. Yeah. So it's fun. I like it. Yeah, I grew up being called Buddy, believe it or not. So oh, yeah. Buddy yeah. and cosplay—that's what I do. So it yeah. kind of worked out well. And then after I kind of took it over and started making all my pages and putting my YouTube videos out there. I saw there's a lady out there who goes by buddy cosplay. I'm like, Oh really? Yeah. She has like five videos, but if she's watching, sorry, (laughs) didn't mean to steal your shit. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, I mean, I've, I've got, I've got the photography and stuff. And then, uh, if I could just real quick, I've also started a, a geeky clothing line that I call a st- stylish Solve some of that stuff stylish senpai and uh, that has actually worked out really well um, I, I get orders and stuff like that I found a very good manufacturer to go through that's that's US based don't have to worry about well this is like Hong Kong sizes for kids you know whatever but it's it's all US based um, they're they're fantastic to work with they do really good quality stuff and actually I've got a uh, new set of leggings that I just designed these 
So, and I actually took shots of speakers. I did all the designing and stuff like that from scratch. And I call those ones Boombox. So there's going to be going up on the website soon. But yeah, just uh, stylishsenpai.com. And you make and everybody that lives in the uh, booty palace wear those, right? They want to wear those. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've had some of the booty palace people order some of my shirts and stuff like that. This is actually one of mine, but it's a friend of mine requested that specifically. I'm like, I'm going to make me one of those too. So it's not one that I sell, but uh, I've got a bunch of stuff on there. So yeah. I've seen the one, I think, with some leggings with a skull and some smoke. Yep. That's the skull. Oh, that's the, the stuff, one you shot that with? The, the stuff on there, I actually, because I want to own the rights to like all the components and stuff that I, that I do with my images. So I bought a fog machine and I bought a skull and I played around with some gels and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, uh, Haley S. Cosplay was one of the, uh, uh, oh, no, she didn't do that one. She did the Harley ones. She was my model for the Harley ones with the ha ha ha, and uh, then Erica was one of the ones for the uh, the skull. Like all those, my necromancer ones. But yeah, I, I want to have all of the rights. So all of the speaker textures on this, all of the wavelengths and stuff. That's all stuff that I've shot myself or done on the computer. Like listen to songs and grab snippets of that, and then photoshopped them in. All of that stuff is 100% me. So I want to I want to be very me, but also to be able to not have to worry about somebody going, hey, you used one piece of one of my shots and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Nah, man. <laughs> yeah. And you missed out on something. It should have been Necropancers. Oh, dang, dude. Necropancers. I'm, I'm all about the puns. I may have to... Uh, <laughs> Rename it, man. Update that. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. That's, that's tight. I like that. Yeah, as soon as you said Necromancer, I'm like, oh, Pancers. Pancers. Dang, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get so many messages like "Wonk, wonk, Wes, come on!" I'm like, "Hey, buddy, told me, man." <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I really do appreciate you uh, taking the time to sit down and share your knowledge with all of us, and uh, I really do appreciate it immensely. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's going to help out a lot of people who just wanting to take some better photos and and just get out there and start getting their photos taken in a in a better way. So awesome. if you don't mind, just hang on the line for a second. I'm going to stop this recording and wrap it up, and uh, we can chat a little, little bit more. All right. Thanks, man.